homeowners, you need to know this, especially if you are facing foreclosure in a pre-foreclosure status, or even if you have suspended that you're about to enter a pre-foreclosure status because knowing the steps of the New York foreclosure process can and will make a big difference in your success of saving your house from foreclosure and even avoid foreclosure, period. And if you stick to the end, I will show you a way where you can cash out on your equity and even lease your house back up to 12 months. So let's get right into it. We have a lot to cover, but let me just give you a real quick rundown of what you're in for in this conversation. So we're gonna be talking about the pre-foreclosure, the notice of default, the judicial foreclosure process, the two steps that are within that, the court proceedings, the settlement conference, the judgment of foreclosure and sale, the foreclosure sale, the post sale, and the deficiency judgment and eviction. Now. If you've been following me long enough, you know that my goal is to help you avoid foreclosure and cash out on your equity because I don't want the bank to have it. Screw them. I want you to have it. So let's jump in. All right. So let's get to the pre-foreclosure in New York. And that basically is that you, the homeowner, have been missing your monthly payment every 30 days that you miss a payment, you will get a letter from the lender, the bank, the mortgage servicing company that is demanding a payment or even phone calls. Those attempts to contact you via the phone or mail is an attempt to get you on the phone and collect the debt. These calls may be friendly, they may not be friendly, but you will be getting phone calls and notices in the mail. And once you hit the 90 day mark, which is a three months delinquency, which brings us to the next topic, the notice of default. The notice of default basically states the amount that you owe and the deadline date for you to make that payment. At this point now, we are getting serious here and in a very dangerous zone, which is the judicial foreclosure process. So let's get to step number one. This is where the lender actually files a foreclosure complaint in court. And the borrower, the homeowner that is delinquent on the payment is getting served with a summons and complaint. Step number two is where you have to respond to the complaint. Now this is tricky because depending on how you were served will give you the number of days that you have to respond. If you got served in person, then you only have 20 days to respond. And if you were served in any other ways, let's say by mail, for instance, then you have 30 days to respond. The possible responses that you can have are answer, motion, or dismiss, or even worse, which a lot of people do that I've seen, which is really, really terrible, is do nothing at all, and then it's a default judgment. I do have quite a good amount of content videos that I already posted on my channel to help you understand a lot about the missed payments and how does it work, so you're welcome to check them out. I will have it right there for you. But really, at this point, if you got yourself to this point and you actually got served with the judgment, I really highly recommend that you start seeking help from people who can assist you in this situation. So let's dive into court proceedings and how does that work. That is something that is required across the board, whether you have a conventional loan, FHA loan, VA loan, doesn't matter, it applies to everything because the reason I'm saying that is because there are certain situations and certain loans that will allow certain things when we are fighting with the bank on your behalf and trying to get you out of this foreclosure, but this video is not about that. There is is a mandatory thing that is called case management where both parties present their case in front of the judge and the borrower you can raise a defense or even negotiate a settlement during that time and then there is the preliminary conference which happens 45 days after the filing of the notice of default. And this is where a discussion is happening about the case and the possible resolution. And all of that is happening in court or even on Zoom sometimes, but in front of the judge. And then both the borrower and the bank presents their case. And then there's the settlement conference. The settlement conference is mandatory, by the way. So keep that in mind. I actually didn't know that. I learned that not too long ago, helping a seller that is 
currently selling their property and it's in foreclosure. So it seemed what I've learned is that it's been always around, but it wasn't enforced. And now actually it is enforced. Okay, so what happens during this settlement conference? So first of all, it's held within 60 days after the filing of proof of service. And this conference is aimed to resolve the issue without any additional court actions. And both parties are required to attend. So the bank's required to attend, well, probably their attorney, and then the borrower is required to attend also. And the point is that the judge is expecting both parties to negotiate and have a discussion in good faith to resolve the issue. Now let's dive into the judgment and the foreclosure sale. This is a sticky situation because right here during this specific action is where if the borrower has failed to defend or loses the case, this is where the lender actually is granted and obtained a judgment of foreclosure and sale. So this really the moment where things can escalate and go really fast. Once that happens, uh-oh, the referee is being appointed. So the courts obtain a referee and the referee is to compute the amount owed. Now keep in mind that the amount owed is not just your balance and whatever missed payments. Now you're talking about late fees, penalties, attorney fees. That's why I'm always advocating, please don't wait. As soon as you already see that you are going to be behind on your mortgage payments, reach out and start educating yourself and start obtaining information, learn about all your options and try to get things going way ahead of this, please. So once the referee had obtained the amount owed and calculated it, they have to submit that to the court. And then there's a notice of sale. The notice of sale is required to be posted in the newspaper for at least a four week period. And they have to post the details of the sale, all the information about it, the date, the time, the location where it's going to happen. Now this is a auction referee held sale and it usually happens at the courthouse. So how the sale is being conducted? So the referee that was appointed, they have to conduct it in a public sale and people show up to the courthouse, they make bids and it's being sold to the highest bidder. Let's talk about the post-sale procedures. Now there could be a deficiency judgment. If the sale proceeds are insufficient to cover the debt, oh boy, the lender may seek a deficiency judgment against the borrower. In the real estate crash back in 2000, seven, eight, nine, that was a debt forgiveness that expired a long time ago and it does not exist right now. So this is very, very important. But this must be filed within the 90 days after the sale. So if the bank fails to file, it would be a different story, but I wouldn't count on it. They want their money back. Now let's talk about the eviction. So let's say your house was sold in the referee auction in the courthouse, but you did not evict the property. So what's gonna happen now? The new owner obtains a writ of possession so they can evict you. And then you, the borrower, is gonna be evicted by law enforcement. I don't want you to be evicted by law enforcement. I don't want you to be evicted, period. I don't want you to lose your house. But I want you to understand, please, that we can only help you if you are interested in helping yourself. The problem is a lot of people are just thinking that they're in denial. They just want to go on with their life. They say, okay, whatever, this is never going to happen. Yes, in New York, it probably takes a lot longer than, let's say, in New Jersey, because you have a foreclosure in New Jersey, the, everything moves a lot quicker. In New York, it could take three years from the moment that you are, that the judgment is filed all the way to this sale by the referee at the courthouse. But that's kind of like an average. I've seen properties foreclosed really quickly. And then I've seen properties that are taking forever to foreclose. Every month you don't pay your mortgage. Not only you are missing a mortgage payment, you are also eating away into your equity. Chances are a huge percentage that you guys have equity in your home 
for the main reason that real estate housing market prices have jumped really, really high. So whatever you bought your house for several years back, it is worth more today than it was when you bought it. So you're eating into your own equity. Some homeowners uh, here, they say, oh, whatever, I don't give a crap. I live for free. True. I'm not going to get into all the negative baggage that you're going to create to yourself by doing that. I want you to focus on the positive and look at it this way. Let's say you want to cash out on your equity and, I, and a lot of time, I think that most people don't do anything about foreclosure because they say, okay, well, what am I going to do now? Even if I'm going to sell my house, where am I going to go? What am I going to do? It's hard to buy something. The inventory is low. The interest rates are high. Hell yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I wish things weren't that way. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about it. The only thing I can do is help my community understand and learn and provide you with tools that can help you. So let's look at the positive. If you have equity in your house and you have a foreclosure that's knocking on your door and you're eating away into your equity because you just don't know what to do. So instead of having all these late fees and interest rates and attorney's fees add up and into the debt, why not just sell your house? Hey, but you know what? There is another way. This is for you since you stayed to the end. There is another way where you can keep your equity and then lease your house back. Because think about it. Every time you don't make a payment it's not just the payment that's going towards your debt it's extra penalties extra attorney fees extra this fee that fee all these stuff are eating into your equity and then instead of that you could just sell your house keep your equity lease your house back for up to 12 months have the time to get your life together get your finances together look for another house move maybe to another state but get your life together on your own time so you're telling me there's a chance isn't that amazing having the power and taking control of your life well if you want to do that because otherwise you're just giving it to the bank they're going to get their money later uh, in two years and five years it doesn't matter but you giving your equity away when instead you could just cash on it on your own so i will put a link for you down below if you are curious there's no obligation you don't have to accept the offer you can get uh, several offers and see if it works for you at least you know what call the bank get them to give you a payoff letter that's good for 30 days see how much you owe go on that website see what cash offers you can get and then you decide hey maybe it's worth it for you to just milk it or maybe you're sitting on a bag of cash and you don't even know it so the website is gethomecashoffer.com i will put a link for you down below for easy access check it out you got nothing to lose i hope this video gave you some good idea about the New York foreclosure process. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel. Make sure to check out the other videos that I have about the foreclosure in New York. That's very helpful if you want to learn more. Like this video, comment, let me know how I can help you. Thanks so much for joining me today. I am so happy we had this conversation and I will see you on the next video.